Hey guys, welcome to Piano Rogues. I'm Ari. And I'm Alair. And welcome to part two of Zex Ecosasen by Beethoven. If you're coming to this part having not seen part one, then please make sure that you check that out before you watch this episode. It will be linked in the card above. So then we come to the fourth verse and this verse is actually my favorite. <laughs> I love this verse. Once again, you'll notice there is something missing. <laughs> we are not told whether this should be forte or piano. Again, we could assume that we're coming from the chorus, which was forte, but the texture, if you'll note, is once again very sparse. We only have um, a single note in the melody. And in the left hand, we just have single quarter notes. None, nothing, nothing rich like this to add extra harmony. So I like to actually play this verse very softly. And furthermore, I also slow it down. I like to make this one sound almost shy and a little bit flirtatious. <laughs> noticed I am actually not following Beethoven's instructions at the chorus then because I continue my soft volume <laughs> when I get back to the chorus. What a rebel. I know I'm such a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> and so here's my justification behind that. Beethoven might have hated me for it but <laughs> honestly I think it makes it more fun because I keep the slower tempo and I keep the softer volume and it makes it different from the rest of the times that we hear that chorus. <laughs> yeah, Beethoven probably would have been mad at you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Please forgive me. And that brings us to the fifth verse. Okay, so once again, we have changed textures. You can see that now there are two notes in the melody creating harmony. So it's a little bit more lush than the previous verse, but also you can see that these little short phrases are almost creating a call and response kind of pattern. And I like to play with that. I like to make the first person, like person A, who's making the call, softer, and then the person answering louder, like that. Just because I think it's more interesting and fun that way. And then the other thing is also like to make this a little bit of a crescendo. And then when I get down to the second line, I like to change it up and have this one be louder and this one be softer and that one louder. And then this one an even bigger crescendo. Because you like your crescendos apparently. I do like crescendos. <laughs> crescendos are fun. So my crescendo actually prepares me once again for this measure, which takes us back to the chorus, which is marked forte. So let's see what this sounds like. again. And that will then bring us back to another verse, number six. <laughs> <laughs> this little uh, verse is super fun because we have these little doodads, these little grace doodads. Hmm? Doodads? No. <laughs> doodads. <laughs> Do dads, okay? Yeah, do, do dads. Technical <laughs> terms. Technical terms. <laughs> they're actually they're they're kind of like written out mordants the way that they sound, but they're they're written as these itty bitty little grace notes. It's kind of fun to have a little bit of extra time before you start this final verse. I like to make these distal phrase 
And there's this little phrase, and I like to make them just a little different from each other. This one I make a little bit louder than the others, and this one I make quite a bit softer. And then once again, I crescendo. And I always like to make this last final chorus fortissimo, because it's the last time. Gotta make a big statement. So we hope that you enjoyed this little exploration of Beethoven's Zex Ecosaisen. I'm sure we're going to do an episode yeah. on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with something and you can expect to see this one in its entirety without interruptions sometime mm. in the near future. Don't forget to please like and subscribe to our YouTube. Thanks for letting us steal your screens for a while. Stay rogue. <laughs> ha! Revenge! <laughs>